Accounting equation and Excel. Sales receipt form for sales at a cash register or for when we receive payment at the same point in time goods or services are provided. Get ready and some coffee because we're about to learn the accounting foundation. The accounting equation with Excel. Here we are in Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head, allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey is saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Well, if you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or you could just build your own worksheet as we go or possibly just use good old paper and pencil. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently three tabs down below example practice blank example in essence the answer key the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less excel formatting the blank tab the one we will be working on it's where we started with a blank worksheet but basically are using a template now however adding to that template as needed as we go through the practice problems Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing, looking at a sales receipt type of situation where once again, we wanna be careful about the terminology that is gonna be used in normal day-to-day -day language and a textbook and when we do data input into a software, for example. So if you're in a textbook and you, sit and you hear the language of a sale was made for cash instead of on account, that might be the abbreviated way that the textbook is going to be telling you that basically a sale, ha a sale happen might maybe at a cash register. That's what you might want to be envisioning in your mind so that the payment is happening in some way, shape or form, cash, credit card, electronic transfer, whatever that form may be. At the same time, the goods or services are provided either at a cash register, usually the goods provided there, but possibly uh, services at that uh, point in time as well. When you think about accounting software, then uh, you might be entering the data and not be at a cash register, but you still are receiving payment at the same point in time, say uh, the work is done. You could possibly think about setting that up with an automated system, such as using the bank feeds where the deposits that you are receiving, you basically are assuming are coming from a customer and therefore you're going to record them kind of as income but whatever the system might be if you do that system by the way you might be using like a deposit form which is a little bit kind of unnatural for some accounting systems because the deposit form usually is not the form that we use to record uh revenue because the revenue forms at least in like a quickbooks and many other accounting softwares is either an invoice when you make sales on account or a sales receipt form. So the form that we're typically gonna be thinking of if accounts receivable is not going up and a sale is made is a sales receipt form. Noting that when you hear the term form, you might be thinking that I'm gonna provide that form to a client. However, when you're doing data input in a software, you might provide the sales receipt as kind of like a receipt 
from the check register, a similar process there, emailing it out possibly in an accounting system. But the form is used internally as a data input form. That's the form that you data input in order to record the transaction, the form that will be drilled down on if you do an audit system, drilling down on the end product, the financial statements down to the data input form. All right, that being the idea, let's go on over uh, to the blank tab and do some data input. So we'll start off with, a, with one that doesn't have inventory and then we'll add the added complexity of dealing with inventory in the process. So let's say 115, we have a sale at let's say a cash register and so i would call that a sales receipt sales receipt and you can imagine that terminology being similar to of course if you were to give someone a receipt for the payment that was made at a particular point in time that's the form paper wise that you can think of but again sales receipt to me means the form that we would drill down on in an audit system to see the data input form of a sales receipt all right, so 12,000. So the question would be, is cash affected? By the way, I just added in this first line that we should have in there where we're saying that there was a $50,000 uh, uh, investment by the owner, 20,000 cash, 30,000 inventory, and the other side is in equity. Okay, so is cash affected? Well, we're gonna say that cash is affected because we're receiving some form of payment at the same point in time. Again, it's useful to imagine like a cash register situation. So I'm gonna say that cash is going up. Now note that with a sales receipt form, you have a similar situation that in practice, as opposed to in a book situation, you might have this issue of grouping the payments together so that they, when they hit the bank statement, they will be in the same format as when you uh when you make a uh, deposit into the bank so that you can do a bank reconciliation now if you're at a cash register and you're receiving cash payments that is almost certainly going to be an issue that you'll have to deal with because what's going to happen is you're going to collect the cash at the cash register and then you're going to have to go to the bank and deposit it not depositing it as each individual cash payment that you received therefore the bank statement not showing every sale that was made but rather depositing in one lump sum therefore you would want to put it into a clearing account which we will talk about in another example shortly you put it into the clearing account here and then deposit it into the cash account in the same format as the actual deposit form, making it easier to do a bank reconciliation. However, uh, if uh, you, you, you are making payments and you're getting like an electronic transfer or something like that, possibly with the use of a bank transfer or something, then you can might be able to put it directly into uh, the checking account using a sales receipt form or possibly given some accounting software you might be using like a deposit form, which would be recording a similar type of transaction for the data input form. All right, so the other side is gonna be over here in sales. Let's go on the sales. It's on the income statement, equity income statement, revenue or sales is gonna be the other side, equity going up. Let's put some zeros across the board. We've got no sub ledger we need to deal with because this is just a cash based system. Noting it's a cash based system, not because uh, we just chose that we want to use a cash base versus an accrual base, but because we're in the type of industry, like a cash register, where naturally we get paid when we do the work. If you have a restaurant, you're not going to be invoicing the person that you just gave a meal to. You're going to be saying, pay me now, please. Right. But if you're a bookkeeper, you're going to have to invoice generally because that's the custom of that type of industry. Let's sit. Let's do a sum of these two let's sum these up and copy that and then we'll copy this across so we'll say paste it formulas only pasting it formulas only i'm doing this more quickly because we have seen these in the past and so i'm so if you if this is your if you're new here i did it a little bit more slowly in prior presentations but but now the people that have been following along are like, you need to speed it up, man. You need to speed it up because you're lagging. I know how to do this. All right, so then we're gonna copy this down. We're gonna copy this down. Do, do, do. And so assets went up by 1,200. Nothing happened to the liabilities. The equity is going up by the 1,200, which is in the income statement, which is part of equity. 
And so that's going to be that. All right. So then we're going to say that's that's the whole transaction, right? If we had just the one sale. Let's do another one uh, this time. I'll do it again. I'm going to say 921. But when we receive the payment this time, I'm going to put it into undeposited funds. So it's the same thing. We're going to have a sale that happened. Imagining it goes into a cash register for like 900. Let's imagine that we got cash this time or similarly like, an, like a credit card payment, either of which will not go directly into the checking account, but will either be in the cash register or be accumulated and accounted for by the credit card company before it hits our checking account. So therefore, I'm going to put it into the intermediary account of undeposited funds. The other side is still going to be increasing the sales. So the other side is the same, but we put it into a clearing account, which is basically like a cash account, but it's a holding account so that we can transfer it from there into the checking account, possibly then using a deposit form, which is nice because then the deposit form will be the only form that shows basically increases to the checking account, allowing us to filter by deposit forms if we're using accounting software rather than having to filter by deposit forms and sales receipts when we're trying to look at increases to the to the checking account. All right, let's put zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Zeros. Oh, not there. Control Z. Don't. No need to panic. I almost panicked again. But it's like, that's okay. I have a undo button you should know by now it's only been like 40 years of excel work you should realize you you don't have to panic every time because there's an undo button that's why they put it there let's sum up the last two here summing this up i have a if i just stayed calm i probably would have saved like put 10 more years on my life instead of panicking every time i deleted something and then I'm like, oh, wait, I got the undo button. Maybe I shouldn't freak out. I was, even if I didn't have the undo button, what's the point of freaking out? You know, that's what I'm saying. I don't even know why I would freak out anyways. But that's just what I do, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, let's 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 do another one before. So before we deposit that, we're going to say on the same day, 921 let's say we made another sale but this time we're dealing with inventory so let's say we sale of inventory item at like a cash register so let's say the units that we sold of the inventory are 200. so we just have one type of inventory we're going to imagine right now just to just to make it simple obviously again anytime you deal with inventory you got to think about how you're going to set up your accounting system do you want to track inventory within the system or using a periodic system outside the system and uh, so on and so forth. But we're going to have to track the inventory in some way, shape or form. If we are in a store, then clearly they're going to bring up the inventory to the, to the cash register and we're going to be able to count the units of inventory in a similar way as you might be useful checking out your own stuff at a grocery store, which oftentimes has an automatic checkout here in where I'm at at least. So when you do the automatic checkout, notice it will tell you the sales price. We're going to say 2,500. It's currently in a percent format. I'm going to adjust that by going to the cell above it, home tab, format painter, and paint brush it down, then put uh, the 2,500. So I'm going to put the sales price is 2,500. And then I'm going to put the sales tax rate now this would be a usage tax in the united states that's going to be a state tax versus a federal tax which in the united states is a federal income tax in other countries you're going to you might have a similar uh, usage tax depending on where you are at remembering accounting is universal the double entry accounting system that is taxes are not they're specific to location therefore taxes are always the issue that th the the bureaucratic uh, you know, stick in the spokes that you're going to have to uh, work out and figure out how you're going to deal with that. So let's put 5%, 0 0.05. I'm going to percentify it. And then we've got the, let's say the cost per unit is 10. So remember, if you check something out at a store, 
like with the self checkout, you know the sales price. You know the sales price, the cost per the, the cost to you per unit. You don't know the cost to them per unit, right? That that's that's unknown. It's not going to be on the sales receipt that you receive because that's but it will be recorded if the system that you are using is using a perpetual inventory system like in a grocery store or something like that. So let's let's record this out. What's this going to look like then? Well, I'm going to say that the cash is going to go up, but I'm going to put it into undeposited funds again instead of directly into the checking account. How much are we going to get? We're going to get 2,500. We're imagining, I know that's a large dollar amount but for the United States, but we're going to get that. And then we're going to add to that the sales tax, which is 2,500 again times the 5%. So that's what we're going to get. We're going to get 2,625. The sales is the other side. That's on the revenue side. Our revenue is going to go up equals, but it's only going to go up by the 2,500, not the sales tax part, because in theory, that's not our earnings. We're just, we, the government just made us their little collection person on a, and so, so we, so we don't record it as income. It's off income statement, but rather we put it into the liability because we're just collecting on their behalf. It's going to go up on the liability and then back down. So the sales tax payable is going to be equal to the 2,500 times the 5%. Boom. Okay. So there it is. So that's going to be in balance. So we're going to have to still deal with the inventory, but I can basically think of the inventory as a separate tra transaction, even though it happens at the same time when doing a perpetual inventory system, as would be the case in like a grocery store or a cash register. Typically let's copy this down, which I haven't been doing. So if I copy this down over here, let's hope we were in balance before copy this down on the last one. So 900, 900, here's our, here's our current balance. Okay. Let's copy it down thus far to here. So there we are thus far. There we are thus far. And so see, we're still in balance. See, we're still in balance. These two add up to that. Okay. But now I'm going to record the other part of it, which is the inventory situation. Now to think about the inventory, we have a sub ledger that might be doing this automatically if you set it up in the in like your accounting software properly right so we might already have on the books we're saying 10 units at like uh ten dollars a unit three thousand three thousand units thirty thousand units we would need a flow assumption typically uh for most types of inventory unless you're using specific identification which would be the case if you have large types of inventory that are unique such as a car or something but otherwise, you're going to have to use FIFO, LIFO, or something like that, which I'm not going to get into in detail right now. But the general idea is they cost $10 a unit. And we sold, uh, how many units did we did we sell? Uh, 200. I'm going to put a negative of the 200. So I'll put that in first. The cost, I'm going to say is $10. We only have one layer of cost right now for if you're using FIFO or whatever. And then that means the amount is going to be this times this. So there's the 2000 that we paid in dollars. So the total units then is going to be 3000 is what we had before in units plus the negative 200 that we decreased it by. Therefore, the units we have on hand now, we're going to imagine 2800. That gives us the dollar amount of 2800 units times $10 per unit. So this is the issue that we have with the sub ledger for inventory. That being, we we can't just track inventory by dollar amount. We need the sub ledger breaking it out by unit uh, as well, which becomes more of an issue when the dollar amount of the cost of the units change over time, forcing us to use a flow assumption like first in, first out, last in, first out, weighted average, and of course becomes more complex if I don't have just one type of inventory, but multiple types of inventories that I have to use a flow assumption on each one and so on and so forth. But that's the idea. This 28,000 should match what's on the general ledger or in our account over here after we make the adjustment. So inventory, this is the accrual component that we would have to do for inventory. Inventory, once again, forcing us to abandon a cash-based system most of the time 
because we have to do the accrual thing of putting the inventory on the books as an asset when we buy it instead of just expensing it as we would do if it was a cash-based system. So inventory is going to go down by, once again, I'm going to say 200 times 10, 2,000. So the net impact on assets is the cash we got, the payment, minus the inventory, uh, 625 net increase. The other side is on the income statement. Income went up by 2,500, but we had to consume something in order to generate that, not in cash at the moment, because we already paid cash for it in the past, but with the consumption of the inventory asset, which is of course the biggest expense, typically, if you sell inventory, that being the cost of the inventory, which we call COGS or cost of goods sold. So it's going to be a negative decrease over here for the, in essence, expense account of 200 times 10 again. So the impact on net income for this sale of the inventory, once again, is 2,500 minus, well, this time 2,500, the sales price, not including the sales tax, minus uh, the, the uh, 2,000. Okay, and that should put us back in balance over here. So that puts us back in balance so we're still in balance still got the green zero so we're good to go yo all right i'm gonna stop saying yo you can't say yo is like that's like what people said like a hundred years ago dude like what are you doing man let's put a zeros across the board does anyone even say yo anymore i'm finally i finally got i'm finally into it now but no one, but now no one does it anymore. I'm gonna say, let's put some underlines. I'm a little behind the times, I think. But I'm ahead of times. I'm ahead of the time because it's gonna roll, because it's cyclical. So it just depends how you look at it. I'm behind the times by like 40 years, but then because it's gonna come back around at some point, I'm ahead of the time by whatever like until it comes back around i'm gonna then sum sum this up equals the sum of these up to there let's copy that oh it's got an underline i'm gonna have to delete the underline that's okay i'll paste it formulas only paste it formulas only paste it formulas only Let's get rid of the underline. I'm going to select this whole thing and make it look nice. Make it look fancy, like pleats on the pansies. Let's uh, get rid of the underline. Okay, okay. All right, and so then we're going to say, now let's make the deposit. So now we have 3,525 in our undeposited funds. Let's do it. I'm going to do a freeze pane, so I'm all the way up. I'm on cell A4, then I'm gonna go to the view tab and freeze panes. So now I can scroll down so the headers are still there. So now we've got the 3,525, which is two transactions that were in here. That's why we didn't put it directly in the checking account because now I'm gonna imagine that was received in cash or possibly with a credit card, either of which case means that it wouldn't hit the checking account with 900 and 2625 but rather is going to hit the checking account at the end of the night when i make the deposit at 3525 therefore i want to make the hit the checking account with 3525 not two transactions of 900 and 2625 otherwise it's going to mess up my bank reconciliation because the bank is going to see it as one number not two numbers and that's the idea this is also could be useful because the sales receipt form, if you make them go directly into the checking account, again, means that a lot of software will use a different data input form for increases to the checking account. Therefore, when you want to sort the data, looking for increases by the checking account, sorting by deposit by form, then you'll have two forms, a sales receipt and deposit form. Whereas if you use the clearing account, then we can always use a deposit form to increase the checking account, which could make it a little bit easier to sort information in the checking account, which is the most common place to be sorting information and the most complex because it has more types of transactions in it than any other. 
So sometimes it's easier to simplify the number of forms that are going to be hitting the checking account for increases to the checking account to simply deposits and then possibly transfer forms. All right. Let's say that this is going to be uh, uh, on 921. At the end of the night, we're going to deposit. We're going to walk to the bank and cash that check. Got to be careful because there's there's crazy people on the streets these days, you know, so we have to make sure we're we've got, we're locked and loaded over here to make the deposit. And so we're going to say, and how much are we going to put in there? I'm going to say it's going to be equal to the amount in the undeposited funds. That's what's going into the bank. And then we're going to take it out of undeposited funds. So the other side is going to be a negative of that amount, right? So it's just going to one asset accounts going down, the other cash checking accounts going back up. Okay, so then we're going to put uh, zeros across the board zeros across the board all right and then let's put an underline under here to make it look uh suitable for presentation purposes got to make it look nice making it nice looking is half the battle presentation is half the battle that's what gi joe would say and so we're going to say this is going to be then the new balance is going to be the sum of that. Let's sum it up equals the S U M of these two. So now we've got 24, 725 in cash, undeposited funds going back down to zero. So there we have that. Let's copy this and paste it across the board. And it should just bring down everything. Nothing new happening over here. Just the same old, same old, same old, same old, man. What's happening? Just the same old, same old. Over here, all the stuff's happening on the cash side. That's where the action is. We're just chilling over here on this side of the equation. So we're just going to put some underline on that one. And then let's copy down our formula. So here's what the balance was before. I should have done this last time. So it's copying down uh, the balance there, which is this and this. And then we'll just copy it down to these two. So nothing's happening because it came out of one asset and into the other. So even though the cash or the assets were impacted on both sides of the equation, it balances out uh, to zero. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the sales receipts.